This week on Maker Update, a kalimba made from teeth, Arduino gives the Yoon a second chance, hacking a greeting card sound machine, a giant button for a dollar, and five Maker materials you can cut from an old bike. I'm Donald Bell and welcome to another Maker Update. How's everybody doing? I've been having a fairly productive week working on my power racer for Maker Fair Bay Area. I've got a break on it now and the makings of a steering system, both fairly critical elements. Uh, I'm really excited about this week's show. The themes here are about repurposing materials and technology, which is really at the core of how I became a maker. As a great example, let's check out the project of the week. Over on Instructables, Luke Velikoop has a great write-up on making what he calls a trash kalimba. These are sometimes called thumb pianos, and I've seen them done a dozen different ways, but there's something about Luke's approach that really has me inspired. First, there's an incredible variety of different instruments he's made using the techniques he outlines in the Instructable. Bigger, smaller, more notes, different materials. Some even have guitar pickups in them. Second, he lists off a bunch of different materials that make for good tines including hacksaw blades, rakes, bike spokes, windshield wiper metal, street cleaner bristles. You can tell someone's been at it a long time when they can reel off all the options. Best of all, Luke's guide methodically captures the process of creating the crossbars that hold the tines in place. It's a relatively simple technique, holding everything together with flexible metal wire and tension. The result looks great and sounds cool too, and I love all the variations that encourage you to experiment. There's even one made from fake teeth. Also, poking around on Luke's homepage, he has a lot of other great projects, including a motorized gamelan made from steel bike tubes. How cool is that? It's time for some news. Last week, Arduino announced version 2 of their Arduino Yoon board. The original Yoon was announced back in 2013, but support for it was fumbled with all the Arduino company drama, and there are some real hardware issues that held it back. Version 2 will ship later this month, priced at $59, and with a whole new hardware design and software update. The key feature of this board is that it has a dedicated Linux processor, that big metal box on the top, in addition to the classic Arduino chip. As I understand it, the Linux aspect of this is really to provide a strong and flexible networking capability for IoT projects. Another unusual feature of this board is that it has a full-size USB port that acts as a USB hub, and both the USB port and the Ethernet port are mounted through the board instead of on the board to give it a slimmer profile. This way you can stack shields on top without shorting it out, which apparently was a problem with the first generation. In other news this week, Maslow CNC, the creators behind the inexpensive Upright CNC kit, have launched the Maslow Community Garden. The site is in beta, but it gives users a place to share their projects with each other, like this CNC plywood crutch. It's time for another cool tool review. This time we're gonna take a look at this greeting card sound module. There's a bunch of dirt cheap variations of this out there, but this fancy one cost me $9 on Amazon and it is a straightforward way to add sound to your projects. If you wanna pick this one up, you can use the Amazon link in the description, which helps support my videos and the Cool Tools blog. Sometimes you're making a thing and you want it to make a sound when it's pressed or turned or opened, and you'd think that would be an easy thing to do, but it can get surprisingly complicated and expensive to pull off. One way to keep it simple is this pre-wired sound player module. It comes with a speaker and a button already wired up, plus wires to connect up a jack for a five volt power adapter. Or you can also do what I did here and wire up a 3.7 volt rechargeable LiPo battery or an 18650 battery to the 3.7 volt connections here. Now there are a lot of cheap voice recorder modules out there and I plan on doing a separate video on why those are great but what I like most about this board is that you also have a micro USB connection where you can load up your own MP3 file. The board shows up on your computer like a thumb drive. Mine came with a little song already loaded on it. Delete the demo file and load up your own and now you have a button triggered sound effect that you can fit in your project. You only get four megabytes of room on here though, so if you want a long sound like a song, you'll need to lower the bit rate way down in a program like Audacity. I've done it before though and it works. Another upshot of the USB port is that you can use it to recharge the battery that you have wired up to the 3.7 volt side. So if you keep this USB port exposed on your project or extend it to the outside with a panel mount extension cable, you can both recharge your project and reload your sound file. What I also like about this solution is that it's easy to hack what's here. If you wanna change the speaker, you just cut off the old one and use the same wires to connect up a bigger one. If you wanna use an arcade button or a tilt switch instead of the included button, you just chop it and replace it. You don't have to read a schematic or decipher the circuit board labels, just upgrade what's already wired up. 
That said, if you are down for some more intense hacking, a photo on Amazon, which I'll also post on the Maker Project Lab site, shows all the different modes and options. You can wire in a photo resistor to make this light sensitive. You can short out some of these resistors over here for different playback modes. And you can adjust the volume with this tiny potentiometer. There's a lot you can do. My plan is to use this to add a custom horn sound for my go-kart, but there are a lot of possibilities here and I'll probably order another one up just to have it on hand. That's a look at this $9 sound module. You can pick one up using the included link. And remember, you can find thousands of reader recommended tools like this at cool-tools.org. I have a few more tools and tips to share. If you want a big cheap button to go with your sound module, MakerBlock has a guide on how to modify inexpensive tap lights to work as custom NeoPixel lit buttons. I'll also include an Amazon link to the $4 four pack of tap lights that he's talking about. Magpie issue 68 is out and free to download. As you might imagine, this issue is all about the latest Raspberry Pi 3B+. A longtime fan of the show, Dan Porter, has opened up his own 3D printing production facility in Burlington, North Carolina. It's called Hummingbird 3D Solutions. I met Dan at East Bay Maker Faire a few years ago and he gave me this beautiful multicolor print RFID tag. Dan is the man and he gets an unsolicited plug for his new maker business. Have you ever wondered how many cool parts and materials you could salvage from an old bike? Well, this weekend I bought a used kid's bike for $5 and chopped it up to use the front as a steering assembly for my go-kart. But after seeing Luke Velikoop's salvage music instruments, I was inspired to harvest all the little bits I could from this bike that I could use for other projects. Just from one wheel, I was able to clip out spokes that I can use as tines for a kalimba like Luke's. The wheel hub can be used as a bearing or make something else spin. The inner tubes are a very popular material that are used as tie down straps. The rim has a nice chime sound, but could also work as a lamp with some LEDs around it. And the protective rubber lining is like a giant rubber band, though there is a small patchable hole in it for the tube stem. I was really happy with all the little elements I was able to harvest from this bike, and I'm sure there are more, but if you have other ideas or projects that reuse bike parts, I'd love to hear about them. So leave me a comment. Maker Fairs, this weekend we have a bunch including Jacksonville, Florida, Meridian, Mississippi, Miami, Florida, Lakeville, Connecticut, and Pennington, New Jersey. If you have one near you, get out there and mix it up. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave me a comment, leave me a thumbs up, get on the email list, get yourself a cheap sound module. And if you really like what I'm doing here, you can buy me a coffee using the buy me a coffee link down here. And that's a direct way to support me, all right? Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.